You're listening to Channel Talk 101, where we discuss topics that explain the best tactics in channel marketing to help manufacturers sell more of their products. Good morning and welcome to Channel Talk 101. And, uh, you know, over the past few uh, weeks, we've been having some great leaders um, on the uh, uh, on the show talking about you know the power of channel how to engage with you know a third party marketing uh, program etc and really how to drive you know um, sales through partner programs and that's the whole idea of channel talk 101 is to get people talking about this it's that one-on-one -on -one engagement with leaders executives etc and so what we've what we've done is um, we brought on today um, one of our preferred um, and trusted partners, Channel Assist. And uh, what they do, of course, is, well, um, they, they, I remember them being called, when I was doing enterprise sales, incentive uh, programs, reward and recognition programs. But uh, as you'll, you'll hear, I've got Richard um, Stevens on who's the president of Channel Assist and he has a different word for it so so today I've got Richard on, in the studio with me hello Richard nice to have you on the show today Good morning Carl how you doing doing excellent doing excellent one of the things I think you know one of the things that we, we we've been talking about off camera over the past few weeks is you know you know, some people know the industry as reward and recognition, incentives, etc. But you stopped me the other day and you said, look, at the end of the day, it's an engagement uh, campaign program. You like to call it engagement, don't you, rather than incentive and reward. What, why, why do you do that? Well, there's a number of words that people use for what we do. Incentives, rewards loyalty. Um, those are words that are very, very common. And to be honest with you, when people ask me, what do you do? I often use the word loyalty because that's what they can relate to. But really what we do is has nothing to do with loyalty. It has nothing to do with incentives per se. It's all about mindshare. It's gaining the mindshare of salespeople that don't report to you, that aren't your employees. And if you just talk about incentives, well, incentives are nice and everybody wants an incentive. But the fact is, is that most people, when they get an incentive, they didn't even realize they were getting the incentive until after they made the sale. Engagement is all about thinking about that vendor at times when you're not making a sale. So for example, um, engagement's about being properly trained. It's about being uh, uh, positioning a product before someone asks for a product. It's about identifying uh, when there's an opportunity even before the customer themselves have an opportunity. I mean, you're from enterprise sales. Most of the time when you're talking to a customer, it's not about trying to push a product. It's about listening to what their problems are and trying to solve their problem. So shouldn't that be the way you want your channel to respond to selling your product? Don't try to push a product. Listen, and then use the tools at your advantage at your disposal based on the engagement you have with the manufacturer to position their product properly as opposed to trying to find ways to push and engagement's more about living the product as opposed to just trying to, well, I have to sell this today, or someone asked for that, so I'm going to sell that. And incentives lean more towards that than they do about finding the proper solution and thinking about the solution overall. Well, I think in, in the world of channel, um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to look at that because there's a, so much noise, isn't there, out there. Uh, and and you as the manufacturer or the service provider, etc., you've got these these partners that get, have got have got other choices. So if you engage with them and you build that relationship, that's so important. And I think you know you gain the trust, you drive you drive uh, mind share. You know I'm I'm top of mind uh, because you've engaged with them. That's I like that. Well, you know, think about it this way. Um, let's say. I sell this pen, all right? Well, if I sell this pen and people ask me who my competition is, they think, well, other pen manufacturers, but that's not who your competition is in the channel world. Your, your competition is anybody that's spending time, that where time is being spent selling their product. So if someone's selling this computer rather than my pen, that computer is my, my competition. Why? Because they're taking time away from the channel rep that I could use in them selling my pen. 
So what you have to look at is a channel rep has dozens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of options regarding products that they can sell. And every time they're selling someone else's product, no matter what it is, that means they're not selling yours. So the best way to get them to sell yours is to provide them with the tools that allow them to be more engaged in selling your product. So now they're selling my pen or at least aware of my pen all the time, rather than thinking about, you know, the computer or the monitor or something else that they could potentially be selling. So what does a manufacturer or a service provider need to start thinking about to, to create that effective engagement program? Well, the, the world of channel is an interesting one in that, well, 75% of all the world's goods and services are sold through a third party. So most companies have to think about how do I get others to sell my product? And if you're going to do that, well, you can't just think, hey, I have a great product. They're going to want to sell my product. What you need to think about is, well, how can I best get the most out of all of these people that have signed up to sell my product? Well, typically, you have some people that are exceptional at selling your product and some that are not so good at it. And, well, you need to figure out how you get everybody to sell your product on a regular basis. And you have to ask one question. Why should they sell my product? Now, I've asked this question of hundreds of senior sales executives and no one gets the answer. They all think, hey, I have a great product. We have great services. Of course, they want to sell my product. Well, that's what you want them to do. And that's how you want the consumer to think. But really what you need to think is, what's in it for the salesperson? What does the salesperson get out of selling your product? The fact is, is that from one day to the next or one week or one month to the next, your product may be the best product, but it could go from the best to the 10th best. So do you really want to rely on them selling the best product all the time? Well, I don't think you do. What I think you want them to do is provide a solution that meets their customer's needs because that's what they want to do. They don't always want to sell the best product. What they want to sell is a product that gets the customer to come back to them to buy more. Well, the sales rep's going to say, well, I could sell your product or I could sell another company's product. I'm going to make the same amount of money. What's it matter to me? Well, what you need to think about is what's in it for them. So maybe what you should think about is how do they make more money? Because let's face it, salespeople, you know, everybody wants more money. But money is fleeting. It can't just be about money. Maybe you should look at training them, but not product training. Provide sales training. By teach them what the value proposition is, how to identify opportunities, how to handle objections. Because let's face it, most of us aren't very good at handling objections. Um, then maybe what you should do is communicate with them more often. Because the larger you are as a vendor, the harder it is to engage each individual sales rep. So find a tool that helps you communicate with them in a manner that makes them feel that they're getting value out of that relationship. And if you do those things, now you're saying, okay, now this is what's in it for the sales rep. Now they're more interested in what I do. And then finally, what's going to move the sales rep? So if I give a sales rep $5 to sell that Mercedes over there, is that really going to convince them to sell that Mercedes rather than selling that Maserati? Well, $5, well, no. So what's going to move that sales rep? You have to figure out, is it $100? Is it $1,000? you got to come up with a, 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 a certainly a, an item that's going to get someone to change what they do now, change their behavior, whether it's this pen or whether it's a car. Someone has to realize, yeah, you know what? That's making a move to changing something, to selling something. Well, I mean, you reminded me of going back to when I started off in the in the engagement, you know, industry as such back in the day, Maslow's pyramid. I mean, at the end of the day, it's you know, what is that comfort level? It's it's lifestyle. It's um, you know, I want to have something that I can brag about, etc. And you've got to come up with that that different type of a program to engage with them. Well, and that's exactly engagement. To me, when someone says, well, what's engaged? Well, how do you tell that someone's engaged? When people start bragging about they just made this or went on this trip to sell, to sell that, when they do that with their peers, now you know they're engaged. What are the common mistakes, would you say, um, you know, that, that companies make when implementing an effective program? What, what are the common mistakes that you've seen? Well, first and foremost, they think, everybody's going to want to sell my product because it's such a great product. Uh, they rely on the product. And let's, it's an age old problem. Um, you know, the best product is never the, the most successful product. Uh, I mean, 
I'm not going to name any names, but we, we can all think of companies that have, you know, a good product, not the best product, but somehow they've managed to be at the top of the heap when it comes to the, the, the best companies. So um, I would say that the thing is, is you do have to ask, why would someone sell my product? Because they're not going to sell the product. They tend to focus on, we got a great product. The other thing is they, they tend not to focus on their own business goals. Um, it's cr critical when running an engagement program to reflect your business goals. If you're looking to sell to specific industries or if you're looking to spell, sell to sell specific products or to specific geographies, your program should reflect that. Don't just send a put a, attach a, a monetary value to everything that's sold because it's like telling your kids to clean the room. The first time you do it, they may do it. But when they turn 14, they don't even hear you say clean my clean your room. So a, a SPIF program where you pay people the same amount over and over and over again to sell the same product, that, that doesn't work. you got to mix it up. And usually business goals change and you have to evolve with them. Um, they run contests. You know, so uh, the top three salespeople that sell the most in this year are going to make get a trip. Well, that's great. But halfway through that contest, you're going to lose 50% of the people that think they have no hope of winning that contest. Uh, and then after that, you're going to lose another 25% because, you know, they're going to say, oh, Joe Smith, he's got two times more points than I do. He's, not, he's got a better chance of winning the contest than I do. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't run contests, but what you need to do is you need to say, well, you need to use the most important feature in sales, and that is empathy. What do salespeople want? What they want is they want knowledge, they want information, and they want to make more money. So align your program based on what they want as opposed to what you think they want. Ask them, what, 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 do you, what kind of return do you want to get when you sell a million-dollar system? Um, how do you want me to communicate with you? Uh, personalize their experience. You know, you, you can have a 1,000 sales reps working for one partner, but don't treat them all the same. Some, they're all selling to different industries. They're selling to different geographies. They're selling to different cultures. There's a huge difference between selling in North America than selling in Europe and, and, and in Latin America and Asia Pac. So you need to personalize the sales rep experience. And, and most of all, don't forget about the sales rep. Um, when I, uh, in my last job, we had a, a multi-million dollar uh, green energy product that we developed. And uh, we, we, we thought the best approach was to build the channel. And so the first partner we signed was a three $3 billion company. We thought, oh, we have it made. This is great. It's, we're going to kill it. What we didn't do is we didn't focus on the sales rep soon enough. Uh, we didn't train them quickly enough. We didn't go on sales calls with them. We didn't communicate with them enough. And we didn't get the impact that we should have gotten out of signing that partner. Signing the partner is not enough. Don't forget about the sales reps. They own the customer relationship. So you need to pay attention to them. I love that. I love that answer as being a sales guy myself. Uh, you know, you've got to you've got to listen to us, and you're right because you know that relationship that we just that we touched, talked about is crucial. I mean, my goodness, how much money do you spend on, on on developing you know that pipeline, and when that that great salesperson you know builds that rapport with the with the decision maker. You got to make sure they're gold and and treat them like gold. So I lo I love that answer. I really do. Well, and Carl, the thing is, is that don't just treat the good sales reps like gold. Treat every, all of them like That's gold. That's true. That you is know, very true. When you know, if if I if you have a thousand reps, the, the you know the channel long tail basically says that between five and twenty of uh, you know between uh, fifty and a hundred of those reps are going to be good reps. Okay. Yep. But those other 900 reps, they may not be bad reps. They're just not selling your product. So you, you need to find a way to engage them as much as you engage the good reps. Quite frankly, you may have gotten as much as you can get out of the good reps. Your opportunity for growth is probably going to come from that long tail of the channel. The good reps that aren't selling your product, how do you engage them? Because more often than not, you don't even know who they are, never mind engaging them. And so you need to find a way to know who they are start to engage them, and then communicate with them so you can develop develop a rapport and start that engagement. Well, I, I had a question before this one I wanted to ask, but I'm going to, I'm going to skip to this question because it ties into what you just said. You know, 
many, many times when I was developing the programs, you know, we used to sit down and they and people would say, "Oh, the same people are going to win every time because you know that they're, they're, they're always the top performers. So why should I care? Why should I even take part?" So. You know, I'm going to ask you because we we had to come up with solutions. But what are the what are the ways that you can engage those, as you say, those other people that are not always the top tier, and so that right. they are engaged? What what other ways are there? Well, you, number one is there's there's countless number of ways, and you never go with one way. You go with multiple ways. The we call uh, and we we call our our engagement. A, 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 a program, but within that program are a host of what we call promotions. So each promotion is a marketing tool that we design to align with a business objective. So let's take uh, you know one of our customers. So HP is one of our customers, and let's say they want to sell a specific printer to a specific industry. So our job is to design a promotion that creates that level of engagement that gets people to drive more revenue for that particular product in that particular industry in that particular geography. So, well, let's, I'll give you an example. Um, so in the, in the printing industry, um, a very commoditized industry, now my customer may not be happy that I'm saying that, but the fact is it's a commodity. And so consumers look at it as a commodity. Um, they came to us and said, look, we need to find a way to get more revenue from this particular um, in, from this, this, this product. So, but the problem is, is that all our competitors have incentive programs. So what are you going to do? Well, we thought outside of the box. We thought, well, tell you what, why don't we incent the sales managers as much as we incent the salespeople? So if I'm a sales manager and I have 10 salespeople reporting to me and only two are selling that printer, well, I almost guarantee you that it's going to go from two to 10 very, very quickly. So we designed a promotion and we marketed it. We announced it. We sent a whole bunch of communication about it to let them know the details of the, of the, the promotion. And we put a time limit on it. And then we said, go. And so what ended up happening was, is we found that we had all kinds of returns. So the measurables for us, is, and, and the key is, is that you have to measure the response because without that, you don't know how you did. And on top of which, if you're not measuring, you can't tweak it as you go along. But that's an example of us designing a promotion that got more people involved, and we paid them for each product that they sold, as opposed to creating a content to saying the contest to say that only the best people get it. The goal is is to create that level of engagement for all. You don't care what the person beside you is selling because well, there has nothing to do with you. So why create a contest where all of a sudden that becomes important now? Contests are good, but only to a certain point. And what we try to do is if we create a contest, always put a, a bit of randomness in it. Top 10 people win a trip to Cabo San Lucas, all right? But tell you what, five other people that we're going to pull out of a draw that sold something are also going to win. So me selling that before the end of the contest, that extra unit before the end of the contest gives me one more ballot. That's one way to do it. But ideally what you want to do is you want to reward for every touch point. And by touch point, I'm not talking about every time they sell something. We'll often run a promotion whereby every time someone goes on our customer's portal, they get a point. Or every time they answer a survey, they get 25 points. Or um, if they answer a poll, or if they read an article, or if they took training. So there's a lot of ways to keep people engaged. And it's up to each individual sales rep to manage their own business. And that's very similar to what I tell my, company, my, my employees. Manage your business. Don't worry about what else is going on around you. If you manage your business and we build a program that engages you, you're going to see a whole bunch of revenue return for our client. That's that's excellent. Uh, that's that's you know at the end of the day, you know that is something that you should focus on. You mentioned in there in that in that answer there, you mentioned a travel program as such. You know, unfortunately, these days, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Oh, yeah. um, in these days, this new way that we're having to go about things, you know, I've done many, many travel programs uh, and love them. I was a travel director for a while, you know, as, as a going, making sure that everybody had a great time and deep sea fishing and all that. But unfortunately, in this COVID-19 era, you know, 
things are a little bit different, aren't they? What are the alternatives out there? How do we change that 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 uh, uh, that that focus on travel? Uh, is that I mean, we know there's the point. Is that the way that we have to do that? How do you do it? Well, um, so let's start off with this. Now, most of our customers give cash. Now, we have a reward store, but most people, they want cash. And here's the thing is that I, I read a survey once and it said that nine out of 10 people, when given the choice, will choose cash over travel or some form of tangible asset. Um, but of those nine out of 10, 90% of those people will regret it. Because the fact is, is that, uh, well, I remember the trip I took to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Cabo San Lucas. Um, I remember my wife and I going there for five days. Uh, it was a president's club trip. That occurred, I don't know, 12 years ago. I don't remember the commission check I got last quarter. Um, and what I did with that. So the, th the funny thing is, is that uh, while people automatically want cash, what they really want is they want experiences because those are the things that are long lasting memories. And especially as we get older, <laughs> uh, you know, as you get older, you, you, when you look back, you don't say, well, you know, I've got this great, you know, hundred thousand dollar commission check for, for selling a, a huge amount of product. And here's where I spent it. I, I, you know, renovated the kitchen and I did this and I did, and you don't remember that kind of thing, but you remember that you went to Cabo. Now, that being said, the fact is, is that uh, most people want cash. And today, probably more than ever, um, the, uh, the, they want cash. Uh, you you want to provide cash because uh, there's the, the, the GDP uh, in North America has gone down, which means there's less sales, which means people are making less money. So if a sales rep's commission um, is normally 50000 a year, he's probably making thirty to 40000 a year. But if he can top that up, you know, he's going to be happy to do that. And so in the time of COVID, I think that people want that, uh, first and foremost. And I think what it's also done um, is it's told us as an overall community as to how susceptible we are to things we can't control. And COVID probably done that more than anything else in my lifetime. Uh, my mother reminded me that if you were a 75-year-old born in 1900, you lived through two world wars and the Great Depression. So COVID's really not that big a deal. But the fact is, is that people have died from COVID and we've been restricted into our movements. So this is something that we haven't experienced before. Well, to be honest with you, I think people are just happy to make a little extra money and be able to put that money away uh, for future issues. Um, so that's one way that I would certainly address it right now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Richard. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, cash is king, uh, as they say. Um, but experiences trump that. that has, that's always been the the, 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 the the methodology I've ever had when I'm talking. So what you just said made complete sense. So, so you know, Carl, yep. sorry to interrupt, but no. you know, it's funny. When you look at the sales force now, for the first time ever, more than 50% are millennials right? Their priorities are different than my priorities. So I grew up in the cash is king world. You grew up in the cash is king world. But it's interesting, for millennials, that's not, that statement doesn't hold true. For, for some people it does, but for many, there's, they're looking for more than that, right? So those are the things you kind of kind of have to keep in mind when you design these programs, is that who is the person you're trying to get to engage? Who are you trying to move? Um, because they may not, cash may not be king for them. Maybe they're looking to be very knowledgeable. So you need to provide that level of knowledge. Maybe they do. Maybe they want to provide to charities. They need to provide a mechanism where they could take some of their money and give to charity. Maybe they want to put it into the retirement fund. There's a lot of things you have to consider when dealing with every single individual. Don't assume, we can't assume that those thousand sales reps out there want the same thing. No, that's, that's, that's a great point. I mean, you know, one of the things I, I you know, one of my passions is music and I've been involved with a lot of um, uh, record labels and a lot of uh, musicians and we created a program uh, it stemmed from our street team days where we'd, we'd offer people you know hey if you do this um, so many times you know we'll go out and uh, and, and give you give you points and you can go into uh, a, a, a merchandise store and get the baseball cap with the band's name on it etc but the yeah. ones that really worked, as you said, you're talking about millennials, et cetera, uh, 
is is the ones where we did experiential ones where we said we've got five one-on-ones with Skype with the lead singer of whatever band. They went crazy for that. They loved that. They didn't care about all the gift cards and things like that. They wanted to have an interview, a one-on-one conversation with the lead singer of the band. And that, as you say, that is so important. And I, I love that. I love that. It's, it's funny you mentioned that. So one of the things that I want to do for awards is I want to do once-in-a-lifetime rewards. Awards that you as an individual wouldn't do. And I, I'm a, a huge music fan myself. Um, and I always like, I like the idea of how about providing backstage passes to someone's favorite band? You know, so Springsteen's going on a tour across North America. And how cool would it be when he hits your city? So he's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the people in there, we put a contest specifically for the reps in, L- in, in New Mexico. And, you know, maybe a little broader because anybody would travel to do that, right? And you provide the five backstage passes. Uh, that's a once in a light. Now, those are that, that's how you engage people, right? But those passes themselves, you know, they may cost, you know, five grand. But you give them five grand, that, that just means nothing to them. That, that backstage concert, They'll never ever. Well, they'll forget be talking that. about it forever. It to you. They'll be talking exactly. about it forever. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, th- this this next question that I have. I'm mean, unfortunately we're coming up to the end of the our, our segment time, but but I, we know that we're going to be having other ones of these conversations because we can drill down on a lot of these different subjects that we just talked about today. I'd really just wanted to have this overview, which is great, and you've done that. What one of the things that I was going to ask you, and you kind of answered it all the way through this this segment, uh, this conversation, is what are the benefits of engaging with a company like Channel Assist? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give I'm going to give you my take. Real first of all, that I've taken from this conversation is you've been doing it a long time. You've, you've got the experience, and you can't just throw a program to the wall. You need to plan. So I think that Channel Assist is most valuable even before you launch anything. So it's the planning stage, isn't it? You know what? It is, but I would say this, is that we are a business solution. So for me, it's I've been, I've been selling technology for 35-some-odd years. Um, and to be honest with you, yeah, technology, yeah. It doesn't really, it's not that important to me. What I like to do is solve problems. And so I like to use technology to solve problems. So the number one thing about what we do is we will actually drive double digit revenue growth in your channel. That's number one. The why channel assist is that, yeah, we design programs. We design programs and best practices for programs. And we come up with new ideas as to how to design programs. The fact is, is that 80% of people with incentive programs manage them in, in their own offices. Their own marketing department does it. But they flounder because this isn't their principal job. And they'll run it with a spreadsheet and say, okay, you know, we're selling that product today. Let's give an incentive of 0.5%. Well, the, the attention you put into it is generally the attention you get out of it. We take real strong care of this, the program we run for, our, run for our customers. And when we do that, that comes across to the sales reps. They see diversity. They see a, a wide variety of communications. They see something new every week, which gives them a reason to visit your website. Uh, we engage them, and they give us engagement back. That's why you should look at Channel Assist, because it's not about the ease of running a spreadsheet. It's about that engagement, that one-to-one that you can get with that we help you as a vendor get, that they perceive that it's that vendor providing it. They, the sales reps don't know who we are. We're the white label that's that extension of our clients. And that clients are now providing that one-to-one relationship that they should be providing all along, almost like they're a direct sales rep. And I'll leave you with that. Treat your channel reps like a direct sales rep and you'll see success. But that's really hard to do to, uh, today. Well, we I, I, I mean... You know, one of the things that we say here on Business Class News is when you want something done, go and talk to a specialist. Have them actually deliver that for you. Because as you say, busy, busy, busy. We're all very busy. We're busier now, I think, than ever before. 
and and if you do something that is 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 half energy, um, as you say, it's garbage in, garbage out. You know, it's that mm-hmm. it's that that analogy. What you need to have is have that person and keep the momentum going, you know, because that's the thing. You see these things that get launched, and then they go fizzle out, and they don't keep that momentum going because they don't have the time to do it. So that's why they need you guys. And that's you know what, Carl. That is a perfect example of why programs fail. Yep. They lose momentum, and it's like it's almost like saying, I'm going to give you $50 for doing something, and then I don't pay you for three months. Why would I ever do that again? Because I don't trust that you're going to pay me. So it, it, losing that momentum affects your relationship with anybody that works with you. And our job is to make sure that momentum never gets lost, because that's usually the issue in running your own program. Richard, thank you so much for joining me this morning. As I said, we're going to have a whole series of these because, you know, as I say, the, the golden nuggets that we've talked about in this conversation, I think we need to drill down on. So on, on Channel Talk 101, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work with you guys to, to have those specific conversations. So thank you for joining me this morning. What a great conversation. And, uh, you know, we'll have you back on very soon. Thanks very much, Carl, and uh, you be well. Of course, that was Richard Stevens, the president of Channel Assist. And I'm going to have all the information below this video, of course, and in the podcast uh, description. It's going to have the uh, link to their um, their website as well. So, you know, one of the things that I took out of this conversation, and it was very, very uh, key to this, is don't just say, oh, I'm just going to give out spiffs everywhere. Talk to a specialist because there's not one, you know, you know, example or scenario that these guys haven't seen. And they'll be able to save you a lot of time and a lot of money um, in terms of making sure it's the right program that you launch. And as, as, as Richard said, keep that momentum going and don't let it fizzle out. So as I say, every morning... Don't uh, don't don't stop. Keep going, because I tell you, you know we're in tough times now. But be safe out there. Wear a mask and um, make some money, because we're in business, aren't we? And I'll see you the next time. Thanks so much. Goodbye.